Hello, everyone. Welcome. We are on week five. Can you believe it? It's already week five. It's craziness. How is everybody doing? Chef, how are you doing this week? Feeling good. Feeling great. Um, busy. You know how, how Wednesdays and Thursdays go for us chef evaluators, right? Busy. Yeah. You are busy. But how is everybody else doing? Has anybody gone out to eat anywhere and check out menus? I went to Applebee's. Ooh, Applebee's. What was the first thing you noticed about their menu? As I was sitting, I was telling a friend of mine about the class we was doing and that basically that the atmosphere should basically fit how the food is. And so um, they... I think it was right on point with the way their food were and the decorations that they had in there. Oh, good. And were you happy with what you ordered? Yes. Especially yeah. when it was all you can eat. <laughs> it was all you can eat ribs and shrimp. Can't go wrong there. That sounds good. Make my stomach girl right now. Mm. Yeah. That's fantastic. So. It wasn't a bad deal for $14.99. No, it's not a bad deal at all. That's really good. And then where else did everybody go? Anywhere else fun and exciting? I went to Friday's and had the most horrible experience ever. Oh, no. That's not good. <laughs> TGI Fridays. TGI no bueno. Fridays. No yeah. bueno. Oh, that's menu, not good. Menu layout. Pretty, pretty simple, pretty easy peasy. You know, they even have the uh, specialty insert, which is cool, um, you know, to be like, oh, hey, look, we got these cool specials going on. This is what our, you know, flat iron steak and, you know, margarita marinated, yada, yada, yada. Real cool stuff. So I ordered that, tried to, first and foremost, right? <laughs> that was the beginning of what I knew I should have just walked away. Um, and so I tried ordering that. We had already sat there for a good 15, 20 minutes, uh, and we were like, just need to look over things. Server didn't even let us know that they were out of it. I go ahead and order the thing that they're out of on their special menu, and they're like, oh, well, can you pick something else? You know, we're out of that flat iron steak. We're just going to be supplementing a, a sirloin, if that's right with you. I was like, well, if I'm going to get the sirloin, I might as well just get the sirloin meal and not this other thing, right? So as to where it's not marinated, what's the point? Um, so <clears throat> got the sirloin, got that ordered, uh, ordered a, a combo appetizer platter because, you know, my little two year old, she will like nibble at those little things. And so first and foremost thing of being a dad going out to di dinner is order something for your child first, real <laughs> quick, right? Right okay. off the bat, look at that menu, yeah. get something in that kid's hands to eat. So that way they sit still. Um, <laughs> so that came out cheese sticks. Still frozen on the inside. Um, no. yeah, chicken, uh, boneless chicken nuggets, right? Um, cold, uh, as to where everything else on that platter was cold besides the potato skins, because the potato skins were the last one that ended up on that plate. So there was ah. a, yeah, bad. And so then by the time we got that, sent it back, got another order of mozzarella sticks, right, right quick, like. Uh, Still frozen. No. Double whammy. Two strikes right there. Okay. Boom. Uh, and so I was like, okay, so how long until we get the rest of this platter? Uh, they're like, you know, about, you know, 10, 15 minutes, but your steak's done. Would you want that? I go, what? <laughs> I was like, so you, you want me to have my steak before I even get my appetizer? You know, I was like, uh, how long into my wife's meal? Oh, well, they're, they're still working on that. Okay, so my steak's done. My appetizer's not even to my table yet. And my wife's dinner is halfway there and probably could take another five to 10 minutes. So my steak could get cold or I just get up and leave and pay for my drinks, which was the end result. Yeah, that's no fun. <gasps> See, and that is why doing the policies and procedures and making certain that you properly train your staff is really, really important, especially if they are not properly trained on their menu 
then they're not going to make a consistent product and you're going to end up with chef Eric just paying for drinks and walking out. And then what's the likelihood that you would ever go back to the establishment again? Nope. Not happening. I haven't been to an Outback since they done me wrong. Not going back to a TGI Fridays since they do me wrong. Yeah. So things to look at and it works so well things to look at for this week because we get to talk about the service the production of your menu which i'm really excited about because i love all the different varieties that we get to discuss um but before we do i want to also remind you guys that we in fact have a cooking contest remember it's the stop basil time i love that i absolutely love that uh was it chef kevin did mm -hmm. this one yeah i absolutely love that chef kevin did that it was fantastic and so get your basil on look at all the fun wonderful things you can do with basil so get creative take a picture and drop it into instagram if you are like me and revolted against social media as soon as i was done running a business like I did, um, then you can just email it to myself uh, and I will gladly send it over to Chef Kevin. And I would absolutely love it if you emailed it to me because then I can see what you guys created. Um, when is so it? Please, uh, this one is by the end of the month, this month, right? Uh, end of? Yeah, end of August. August, yes. Uh, what is August? Is it August 30th or 31st? 31st. So August 31st, so get your basil on, come be creative. You can do sweet or savory, it'll be fun. Be a fun one. And I have to say, we all love voting and looking at all the awesome creations that you guys do every month. So keep it up, do more of these awesome creations. Um, another thing I wanted to remind you guys of, this is week five. And then we have week six. What always happens at the, the last week of class? What's different about the last week of class? Do you guys know? What class is? A week. Assignments due early. Yeah, everything's due early, right? Because it's a short week. It's when is not last long. Week? <laughs> yeah, this, we're on week five. And before you know it, week six is going to be here and everything is due. What day is it typically due? When is the last day of class? Sunday. Yes, Rachel. Sunday, 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 Sunday at 11.59 p.m. Central Standard Time. Um, so plan ahead. You guys have been phenomenal about getting your stuff done and getting your assignments and everything in on time and early, which is wonderful. You guys have really been knocking it out of the park. So just keep up that momentum and get it done before Sunday. Now, this week, we have a discussion and a dis assignment due. You have your discussion, which initial posts will be due on Saturday at 11.59 p.m. Central Standard Time. And your two peer responses, and your two peer responses better have more than I agree or I disagree. You actually have to add to the conversation. Remember how we talked about, it's like a letter. You're writing back and forth to each other. Back in good old days when people wrote letters and used snail mail, you're doing that, writing a letter. So, add to the conversation why is it that you agree what is it about it or you disagree why did you disagree what would you have done differently um, those kind of things and if we head over to your class page each one will get a different preparation like there's different like it's like ketchup whipped cream that kind of thing and you have to decide um, are, is it better to produce it in house or buy it pre-made? That is what you guys get to discuss for this discussion this week, because there's a difference. Are you going to be making your own ketchup or are you just going to buy good old Heinz and call it a day? 
Are you going to make your own mustard, which takes roughly three hours to make? Or are you just going to spend the $2 and get a big old tub of it? Um, that's where you get to decide which one, when is it better and uh, to make it yourself and when is it better to actually buy it. Uh, so that is your discussion that is due Saturday with two peer responses due on Tuesday. You also have your assignment here, which is a knowledge check. So you can take it, take it as many times as you like. If you didn't get 100%, go for 100%. Take it as many times as you need to to get that 100%. And that will be due on Tuesday at 11.59 p.m. Central Standard Time. So remember that this is due now. For those who are in school, do you guys, I have the delightful back of the house here this nice classic brigade system. Who created the brigade system? This is the easy one, guys. You guys remember who created the classical brigade system? The chefs. The chefs. chefs. <laughs> right? Right here. You guys remember? You guys are all quiet today. I know. Oh. Augusto Escoffier. Yes. Escoffier. Escoffier is the one who created the brigade system. He is actually also the one, for those who don't know, was the one that decided that we should be wearing white chef coats. Because if you are wearing a white chef coat and you keep it clean, people know that you are preparing your food in a clean and orderly manner. He also did not appreciate any swearing and he wouldn't allow swearing in his kitchen, which would be interesting to see what he would think about today's kitchen. <laughs> um, the swearing aspect. Oh, you probably have a heart attack if you walked in the kitchen nowadays. <laughs> yeah, because he was very much where you are going to be. It's kind of like um, oh, the Ritz, Carl Ritz Carlton. They have that we are ladies and gentlemen serving ladies and gentlemen. And he kind of had that mentality where you are serving ladies and gentlemen serving ladies and gentlemen. And you are going to look the part and you're going to be clean and professional. And he's the one that created this delightful classic brigade system, which if we didn't have today, the kitchen would just be chaos, right? Because... There'll be all of us, say, in the kitchen, and then a ticket comes in, and then Chef Eric's like, well, I'm going to make the fish. And then well, I'll say, well, I'm going to make the salad. But then another ticket comes in, and I say, well, I want to make the fish this time. And then Eric, Chef Eric's already over there saying, what are you doing? I'm going to make the fish. Um, and chaos will ensue, right? As opposed to what it is now, which is, I always say it's kind of like uh, Anthony Bourdain said it the best, I think, where it's kind of like a pirate ship, right? Where when, once everybody's going to battle, everybody knows their place, everybody knows what to do, and they just do it, get the job done, and all work together to get it, to get it going. Um, and that is how we have this wonderful brigade system. Now, some of the names have changed now, right? You may not say patisser, uh, the patissier. You may say a baker instead, right? Um, or you just might say like executive chef and then have the sous chef. I absolutely love using the classic brigade system because I mean, how fantastic does it sound on a resume to say the, the fritier? You're like, oh, I was in charge of the, I was the fritier at my establishment. That sounds a lot better than fry cook. So. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> right? It's kind of like when people say, Same what's thing the with difference? The gar Garde manager is, it sounds way better than I was the pantry guy. Yeah, right? Like garmage. <laughs> like, oh yeah, I was garmage. Like that sounds so much better. Um, it's kind of like when people say, uh, what's the difference between whipped cream and chantilly cream? And I always tell them a buck 25 because Chantilly cream sounds fancier and you can charge more. So go for the better sounding name, especially for your resume. Make it sound good. Um, have you guys have heard of any of these before? I 
Anybody? Rachel says yes. Yes. Which ones have you heard of? Rachel, you can go ahead and unmute. We had them all in the other classes. Oh, good. Yeah. Oh, and I see Garmage. I know. I absolutely love it. That's the way to go, I say. And then we have our front of the house people, right? This is some of the typical uh, front of the house where you have your wait staff, you can have hostess, you're gonna have your front of house, that F-O-H um, manager. And you have the sommelier. The sommelier is that person who typically is in charge of the wine, right? We got our own in-house sommelier now, right? Chef Greg? I, I know, we do. I was so excited when he got that. He's going to go for level uh, the next level, too. So Chef Gregory, if you guys have not had him yet, uh, has have you guys had Chef Gregory? No? Yeah. Yes? Yes. Well, he is a waiter. Yeah, and he is a sommelier. Uh, so he is, like, if you love wine... Just tell him that you like wine and he'll, he'll start talking. He'll talk up, <laughs> <laughs> talk up the storm. Uh, and you're going to share all these here that you got up tonight. Oh yeah. I always share the slides. Don't worry. All the slides are always going to be in your main page and I can even show you on your main page. It's always right underneath the live session. So if we go to our main page here, um, they're always underneath here. So you can always go back and I always put them right underneath the archive. So do not worry if you guys have any questions about any of the slides, they're always on the main page and they will always be right underneath the live session archive for you guys. Okay. Yes, yes. Okay, cool. I'm glad that you guys. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Deborah. So, and now when you guys go out to eat, what do you typically see for your place setting? Besides the silverwares and the napkins and all? Yes, yeah, silverware and napkin. What do you normally see? Is it rolled up? Is the silverware rolled up in the napkin itself? Is it to the side? It was rolled up. He's rolled up. Yep. Some places uh, have them sitting on the table on a napkin. Yep. Some places sitting on the table in a napkin. What else have you guys seen? What the condiments and the glasses and. Yeah, you can have the condiments and the glasses already on there. Uh, how many people have been to a wedding? I have. Yep. Was it a buffet or was it sit down? I buffet. think it was a cater. It was Last catered? Yeah. yeah, catering. And then did they have it all in a buffet line where you got up and you grabbed the plate yourself and then filled yeah. up your plate? Or was everything like served to you? Buffet line. When I had a buffet line when my daughter got married. Yeah. And this is where I love place settings because now you really get to kind of decide what you want to do, right? Uh, how many people want to do own a restaurant? You can do a raise of hands. You can even do your little raise hand. I want to see a justice Yeah, how many people want to do a food truck? Anybody? Yep. I'm just going to keep my hand up if you're going to keep going. <laughs> I know. How many people want to be a personal chef or do a catering company? Yeah. Well, this is where you, your concept is really going to help you define what type of uh, service you are going to do. And it's as like, is that simple as what are you going to put on the table? Like, are you going to have the silverware all ready to go? Are you going to be a food truck where, I mean, there are some food trucks where you get the lettuce in a bag and you just eat it with your hands. Like it's a salad in a bag and you just eat it with your hands. Um, they don't even have utensils for you. There's like, here's your bag of food and you just like, ju just eat it like a toddler, right? 
or are uh, are you going to do a Michelin star uh, high end establishment where you're going to have every single type of actual utensil out for people? Uh, that is going to help you decide how much wait staff you need. How many cooks do you need in the kitchen? Because it's that typical, if you are going to be a fast casual establishment where the wait staff doesn't have to do, uh, you know, table side making Caesar salads right there at the table, they can probably ha like handle about six like six to eight tables on their own versus if it's a high-end place where that wait staff really needs to take that time because they're going to be like flambeing something or um, you know making that Caesar salad table side then they can maybe only be able to handle about three or four tables so knowing that type of service the level of service you want to do will help you decide how many people you actually should have working at your establishment. And knowing that will not only help for your customer service and for making a consistent product, but it's also gonna help with your costs because then you will be able to know how many people do you need on. Uh, this is especially important for people who wanna do catering because catering is always going to be changing, right? One day you're gonna be doing uh, just a lunch like uh, deliver a lunch for a corporate like meeting. And then the next day you're going to be doing a wedding for 500 people and you're going to need a lot more people for that 500 person wedding than you will for that delivery drop off corporate meeting. Or if you're really good, you knock out both in the same day. <clears throat> there you go. Yep. Yeah. You definitely do that. <laughs> oh yeah. You definitely can. Um, and that's where, you know, you get the proper staff, you train, you get them to be able to follow the recipes and your policies and procedures so that you would be able to go off and do a catering in one area while say Chef Eric is going off and doing a catering in another one. Now, the most typical one that you will notice is the ca casual, Susan, you chef. Uh oh. May I want to turn your video off? Can you hear Barely. You sound like a robot. But now there. Not so much. Uh oh. Right now? A little. Sorry, guys, technical issues. She might have to log out, log back in. So, uh, <laughs> but I think she was moving on to talking about casual place settings, is what she was uh, going there. Let's see if I can. Okay. Am I back? Can you guys hear me? Okay. Yay. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Just when I was going to get going on, on casual, I, was, I have your slide presentation here and I was getting yeah. to the casual place setting. Do you want me to yeah, share the slides while you go ahead and talk, Chef? Would that yeah. make it easier on your, your bandwidth yeah. there? Yeah, let's try that out. And guys, this is a perfect example of having fantastic communication. Chef Eric and I have shared the slides with him. So if something does go wrong, he is there and he can pop up and do it all for you, right? You guys and now, see right? Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Now, this is like a typical one that you guys may see, right? I definitely have used this at the B and B. Um where you have your um oh you can go to the picture. You have the fork and stuff on the right and your dinner knife and teaspoon on the left. And why I love showing the photos is because it's really important um, for your establishment, how much to see, how much work would this actually take? 
How long will it take your servers to be able to set something like this up? This is why you'll often see fast casual restaurants will just roll up their silverware into their napkin because that's something that's fast and easy that the wait staff can do as their side work, right? So how many people have seen this before? Did yeah. you have this at your B&B, Chef? I did. We did have this at the B&B. And actually, mine was a step further than this, too. Um, if you go to the next slide, we can talk about formal. So this is that, um, that formal where you have linens, you have proper table, like proper napkins, not just the, you know, paper ones. Uh, and if you go to the pitcher, this is that style that we actually did at the B&B. &B. We did this one right here. Um, but instead of wine glasses, because they're not drinking in the morning, um, or they, <laughs> they're not at my place, um, it, it will be coffee. So we would take out the wine glasses, and then we'd have the water glass, we'd have a juice glass, and then we would have the coffee right here. And you guys see how it, the fork starts, and it points up, and then it, and it keeps on going in that circle? Um, that is really important. That's actually how you know you're going in the right direction for that top where your cake fork dessert spoon is. You want it to keep on going in the circle. And the same thing with the spoon. The spoon is going the opposite way in that circle, right? So remember that when you are in our catering and if you have to put a dessert fork or spoon up at that top, just remember just if the fork's pointing up, you want to keep it going and you're going to point it the other way. The spoon, it goes the opposite way, like it's going to go around the table, right? Like in a choo-choo train going around the table. So remember that because I did not know that when I went into... Is that also relevant to where it's going to be the order that you eat and that you receive your meal? Exactly. Exactly. Yes, because you have your salad fork and you have your dinner fork and your soup spoon. It goes in like you start on the outside and you work your way in. Um, that's really, Great really important. You that one back in the day, chef. Yes, yes. And this is really important for people who also want to do caterings because I have definitely have done weddings where it wasn't like I've done weddings all sorts where you have the buffet style, the plates there. You just sit down and you get everything on this picture except for your plate. Um, I've also done it where we would do all of this um, and done family style. And so they would need every single thing. Um, and if it was family style, that meant that all the food was just at the table and people would help themselves. Uh, this is also really important for that awesome like butler service and Russian service that we're going to talk about. Amber, what is your question? Wait, so there's two different wine glasses for red and white wine? Yes, there is. Um, there are two different, there's I know. several different types yeah. of wine glasses. There are several, several different types. Actually, if you um, unshare, Chef, uh, and if you want to pull up, I'll pull it up on mine, um, the slides, but if you want to actually pull up, like Google how many different types of wine glasses and then pull up that picture, that would be awesome. Uh, because there are, and now they, you can just have it for a wedding where you have that typical red wine glass and you have a typical white wine glass. And it has all to do about like being able to get the aroma, like the flavors out of it by doing the little thing. And this is where I wish Chef Gregory was here because he would go into far better detail than I would. I'm just like, where's the wine? I will drink that. Um, but, but there are different ones where you have a port wine holder, you can have a brandy wine holder. Um, oh, and did you find the wine link? Wine yeah. folly. Yes. Look at this, guys. Insane. Now, if you're going to just do a typical like catering, you can just have one glass for red, one glass for white, and that's fine. If you're doing a fast, like a like tail, like a casual style restaurant, 
I've even just seen it where they just had one type of wine glass, like the all purpose wine glass, they called it. Now, um, but if, you, but yeah, if you're going to do that, like high end, like establishment, you are going to have more wine glasses like that. Uh, the place that you went to chef Eric, where it was that speakeasy, right? Yeah. Was it a speakeasy? Yeah, yeah. Like how many different types of glasses did they have? Did they have a different glass for every single drink? That's what it looked like. I mean, that bar was stocked. <laughs> that, that, I mean, when, when you base, like, their concept was based around beverages, right? Uh, so that was, like, their big thing as to where they pretty much had just a limited food menu, you know, but they had probably about uh, one fold was just for their food, but then the two other folds were all their beverages and types of drinks, right? Mixed cocktails, so on, so have you. Uh, and then they had a whole nother you know, hard copy for just their wine that sat on the table, which was awesome. So, yeah. And so this is where it's really important. Like what type of concept are you doing? Are you going to need like 20 different types of glasses for everything? And this is just wine. There's ones for beer. There's ones for like, you know, the different liquors and everything. This one is just for wine. So which one are you going to do? And Chef Eric, if um, it'd be awesome. You have that link. So for those who are watching the live session archive, um, I can put that link into the same, uh, message that I send out for the live sessions. And we can also put it on the class cafe so that you guys can see it there, but they have all sorts of stuff. Like, yeah, cause I think I have the wine folly book and I can't remember if I have seen that in the book or not. So yeah and then they have all sorts of different things so this one will be a great link thank you you're welcome yeah, eric that is fabulous um and then the you next one, back up? Oh, I, I grabbed it thank you the next one which is one of my favorites is the ultra formal dining one uh this one i love because of good old pretty woman julia roberts do you guys remember that movie, Pretty Woman? She's like trying to learn ev what every single little part is. And then she has the snails and the snail goes flying and she's like sl slippery little suckers, you know? <sighs> this is what she got to have right here. Um, and if I show you a picture of it, bam, look at how detailed that is. Isn't that crazy? Like, That's a lot of work for that, that, that uh, back waiter, I tell you. Yeah, and this is where if you have to put up this much stuff, your wait staff is not going to be able to handle six tables of doing this. They can only handle like three, <laughs> four if they're lucky. But, and this is where, you know, like, are you going to have bussers at your place? Because they're going to have to clean all this stuff up. You better have a lot of dishwashers going because this is a lot of work. Uh, because you remember good old serve safe and health department this is anything that goes out on that table all of these utensils even if they don't use it you still have to clean it right so that is a lot of work um carrie you said you ate at a place uh that was fine dining in south korea so what did you end up having um it was at least uh an eight or nine course meal. It was amazing. It was actually um, at the Hyundai Motor Corporation. Um, it, it was amazing. They had seafood pockets like that looked like, uh, oh my God, it looked like a volcano. And when you opened it, all the seafood and stuff like fell out of the middle. Um, it, it, they had a, it was at least eight or nine course meal. It was amazing. But then again, like, I didn't know which silverware to use. So I just watched everybody else at the table. <laughs> well, and that is one of the greatest things too, Carrie. Like, if you don't know, you just sit there and wait. Cause if you're waiting, you just look extra polite, right? <laughs> We're like, you're like, oh, did everybody get everything? Oh, good. Okay. Now I will eat now that everybody has gotten everything. And you just look nice and polite while you're like checking to see if everybody else is what the right you use first what you know you're like hmm, 
<laughs> I love that. Yeah. I know. Yeah, that actually happened where my sister and I, we were at our like cousin's wedding and we're little and they had us in a different, like it was a long table and we were not next to our parents. And my sister and I were just looking at each other. That was the first time I ever saw French soup. Where it was that proper French soup with the cheese dripped over it. And we we're both looking at each other like, what is this? We're like, do you know what this is? You know, like having no idea. And then we just kind of waited and waited to see what everybody else did. And then afterwards, my mom said, told us, she said, I was so proud of you girls. You kept on waiting until everybody got their food at their table. You didn't just dive right in. I'm so proud of you. When in fact, we just didn't know what we were eating and what we were supposed to do. So we just waited for everyone. Um, and one of my, and there's more than just these type of play settings, which is why I wanted to also show you guys uh, from different cultures. Like this one is the Chinese hot pot. And it's kind of funny when everybody thinks of Chinese food, they always think of the Americanized version of Chinese food where it's sesame chicken and lo mein. Uh, when in fact, a good chunk of my friends actually eat like this and it's very, very healthy. So it's kind of like that fondue, but without the cheese. So they have your, uh, you have your hot pot and then you have this side is typically like a chicken broth or a beef broth. And then, um, and then they have a more spicy side uh, if you wanted that spice. And then all of this comes out and you just dunk all your meats and your veggies in and you cook it yourself. Um, and they even have it for ones on the go too. So um, for people who are sitting like buff, you're not buffet style, but all sitting together like this one right here, they just have the hot pots like so. Uh, and this one, it's, it's very, very healthy, uh, but not too many places have this one. Um, have you ever been to Sushi Yumi, Chef? I'm sorry, say that again? Sushi Yumi. Sushi Yumi? No, yeah. I'm not. They actually have uh, it set up just like that. Like they, oh, they emphasize on their sushi, but they have all their tables um, have a hot plate in the middle of it. And yeah. so they set it up so that way it's more meant for family style eating, you know, and having everybody be able to take a little bit of here and there. And very similar to fondue, and I love it. Yeah, and it's kind of, it's also the same way with the Korean barbecue too, right? You actually have your grill in the middle of your table and you are just making the food yourself, uh, which I think is always more fun. Um, and then they also have, this one is that Japanese table setting, which I always think is nice and classic for those who have ever had like the good old bento boxes, you know, where it's a little bit of that. You have your rice, you have, if you decide to do sashimi or if you decide to do sushi, if you're going to do um, your little, like your tea or miso soup, any of that type of stuff, um, which is why I absolutely love this one. Um, and the all those different table settings that we just went over these ones ultra formal formal play setting you have the different styles of service to go with it right so you have that american service that you guys have all had um you just sit down it's the applebee's tgi fridays wherever you go um and then we have the buffet um style which was also called smorgasbord uh and you just sit up, you have your plate, and you fill it. And remember, if it's buffet style, you always tell your guests to get another plate. As soon as they're done eating their plate, you have to have wait staff come and take that plate, and then they get a new one. Why do you think that is? Cross-contamination. Yeah, Shamika, cross-contamination. Because, you know, I don't know about you, but my kid's gross. He's like, you know, drooling and boogers everywhere. I don't want that plate going anywhere close to where all the rest of the food is. Like, you know, he'll drop something on the floor and pick it up and then try to eat it. And I'm like, dear Lord, no, you know, like they're gross. So just, you know, that's where having another plate and just saying, that's okay, we will take it. 
and the buster comes, takes it, and then you they just have a different plate going. Um, it's way better. Now, butler service, how many uh, good old Jane Austen, Downton Abbey fans did we have here? Did anybody ever watch Downton Abbey? Can't once raise they, me on that one, Chef. Sorry. Yeah. Once they uh, took out uh, the guy that I cannot remember his name of, and they took him out because he wanted to go do, you know, movies, so they killed off his character, I was like, and I'm done. Nope. But Down no, Abbey, they had that service where you had, like, your butlers and whatnot, and people would you know and this is the difference there's russian versus butler where they have their plate and then they uh the guests themselves will either take the utensils and the like that uh, person the wait staff will hold it while they help themselves or the wait staff will hold the platter and then serve the food to the guests and this is where like this one here will definitely come into play or this one because this one has all of the different plates it has the salad plate the service plate because you already have all your plates the food is just coming to you and it is being served to you uh how many people have ever had the butler or russian service anybody had that I have not ever had that before, which I, I am a huge Jane Austen, you know, Charlotte Bronte fan. I would like love to have that once. What was your experience, Chef? Uh, the, uh, what is that? Like the Alaskan, uh, what, what is that dessert where they oh, like the Alaska? Yeah. So we had that at, um, there's a, a Russian joint. Uh, it's like a Russian Polish kind of combination um off of uh it's like wads out here over where we were kind of by the omni um and they they have that kind of style but they have an option if you want that you know is like if you want that experience they'll give you that experience if you don't want that experience you can go go gung-ho american and they're they're more than happy to give you that style you know oh, so nice. it's more of like an option sort of thing to that they they'll welcome you with oh well, that's cool yeah, that's nice. But and uh, how much if you opted for it, like how many people were helping you? Was it just one guy with you the entire time or did they have a couple of different people? There's three. There are three. Yeah. yeah. For one table. Three people for one table. Think about I that. A little overwhelmed being like, okay, why are so many people waiting on me so hand and foot like, but you know, it's still a fun experience. Oh, yeah. No, that would be a fun one. Um, I would definitely say I would want to try it, try it once, right? Um, but, and then we have counter and cafeteria service. Everybody has done this because everybody's gone to like public school, right? <laughs> Where you're, you're in a cafeteria, you're eating cafeteria food and uh, counter service. These ones are definitely faster, right? You don't need to have three different wait staff helping you eat your food. You just grab it and go. Uh, then some of the other ones are the good old English service and you have your French service. That French service is definitely that, oh, we're making the banana fosters in front of you or your, crepe, your crepes or your Caesar salad, that kind of thing. Um, and then like the Russian, which is similar to that butler service. Uh, and then we have dim sum. Dim sum is one of my favorites. We definitely go for dim sum quite a bit. And this is where they just have by far one of the fastest, right? Because you sit down, you have your tea, um, and they come around in the carts. And then they say, do you want this? Do you want this? Do you want this? Do you want this? And then you have to say, yes, no, yes no yes 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 no 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 for what you want and then they stamp the card um and then you get billed after you eat you do have to be careful with dim sum though because uh some places the people the person pushing the cart they get they get paid by how much they sell on their cart so if you say no and they keep on putting stuff down you really have to say no <laughs> because i've definitely been in that scenario where i'm like no 
no, 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 no. Like, because yeah, the more like they serve on their card, the more money they get. Um, uh, some places are like that, other places are not. So just be prepared. Uh, dim sum is by far one of my favorites. I absolutely love it. And it's one of those where I love eating it and I don't want to make it <laughs> because <laughs> it's so much work. It is so much work, but it's so cool because I mean, like those soup dumplings. Have you guys ever had the soup dumplings before where it's a dumpling and then you open it up and it has the broth inside? Rachel says yes. And actually how they make it is using aspic. So aspect is you know, pretty much like that meat jelly, right? Where uh, it's like jello, gelatin, but then just the meat version of it. You're not going to get the, you know, Oh, I don't even know the flavor, strawberry flavored, you know, here it's going to be your, you know, it's your chicken, it's your fish, it's your beef. And then they cut it into cubes and they put it into the actual like dumpling. And then they do that crazy, like 32 press on top and then steam it. And when it's cooked, it like the broth kind of melts and then it's wonderful and delicious. Uh, have you, uh, Julie said you had that. Has anybody else had those ones before? They sound epic though. I know they're delicious. Oh, I love them. Absolutely love them. Um, and that would be one I definitely say you have to give a go. And now I'm looking to see if I can find soup dumplings so you guys can see a picture of it. I'm going to it's kind of and it comes in its own little tiny thing too which is wonderful but they kind of look they look like these right here you know but they actually have the soup inside of them um, aha like this one right here so this one it comes in its own little container and then, because you open it up and the broth will come out. They're really, really good. And one thing that I want to bring up, which is super important, especially if you decide, well, I'm going to have like an Asian fusion, whatever. And if you're going to have chopsticks, I want everybody, every one of my students to know that there is various etiquettes for chopsticks. And if you do it wrong, it can literally mean death for in so many different ways. I don't think I know any other type of utensil that could potentially mean death by any way that you actually put it down, right? So this is where I have this one here for you because I want to make certain that you guys realize if you go and you go and you go traveling and you eat at places, um, know that there is an etiquette behind what you do so that way you don't offend anybody. Um, because there's different ones for different countries too. Like if you stick the chopsticks and you stick them like this going down straight into the food, you're feeding the dead. If you put it on the left hand side, um, that's typically for like the funeral service. And that means that that's for your feeding the dead. <laughs> and then there's um, 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 the ones where, you know, oh, sorry, I had those back up. This one means that you're digging your grave because if they're sticking in out of your food like that. Um, the ones crossed at the table where you just put it down and they accidentally cross, that means that, you know, that's for death. So just make certain you know for any type of service you're doing, um, whether it is for using the chopsticks versus the ultra service, that you know the, the meaning behind the type of service that you want to do so that way you don't offend anybody if you do it wrong, right? Um, because Lord knows, especially with chopsticks, I had no idea. And I was just like, oh, there are so many different ways. Yeah, I saw something about the chopsticks once in a movie where they had them up and crisscrossed like that. And they did mention that same thing. Um, and I always knew though that resting them across the top meant that you were done. Yes. That, that one I definitely learned early on. 
Uh, and I don't remember who it was that taught me. I think it probably was a server than when I was at a, a, an establishment like that. And I set it down and they're like, oh, sir, are you all done? And I was like, no, I'm just taking a break. And then they're like, oh, well, I just saw the chopsticks that way. And so that's what that symbolizes. I was like, well, that's good to know. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, and if anybody actually um, has like tea or anything and you get the teapot, um, and if you have it, you actually remove the lid if you're out of water and if you're at a tea and then people then know if you remove the lid that they need to go around and refill it for you. Uh, because I am a big tea drinker, especially when I go out. It's like, a question you know, about the sake chef, the sake. Ooh, yeah. what about it? So, so when you order sake for the table, you're not supposed to pour your own. Is that correct? Correct. Well, yeah, that's what I always heard where you can't pour your own. It's bad luck. Somebody else has to pour it for you. Um, um, I have definitely heard that before. Have you guys heard that? Anybody? No. No. That's a good one. Can't yeah. say I've ever yeah. had any bad luck even when I sat down and had sake by myself. Right? I would say, I always, uh, oh, Carrie, it was um, when you have sake at the table, your, um, the rule of thumb is uh, do not pour yourself a glass or like a little cup of it because that would be mean bad luck. So you need, I would need Chef Eric to pour mine for me. Um, and it kind of goes around the table like that. Um, but there's so many different fun things, especially with service and what you're going to do. Say some of you actually want to do like a bakery slash coffee shop um, or a tea shop. Like there are proper ways to like brew tea because tea uh, temperatures have to be different for different types of tea, like black tea versus green tea versus white tea all have different uh, steeping temperatures. And then if you're going to do a proper English tea, you have to heat up the milk um, so it doesn't like, you know, scald the tea. Like there's a whole different type of service that you can do. Uh, so for those who want to do anything with like a bakery or a cafe or a tea shop and do little tea sandwiches, which I always love, those are always a big hit too for uh, um, baby showers and bridal showers. Those were the big ones was doing a proper tea. For what? Little girl birthdays. Mm -hmm. Tea time. Yeah. We had that at the, the Huckleberry in downtown Louisville when I was chef there. Uh, we'd always have to make little tea cakes uh, and then we'd serve them out. And we had like this group of like, I don't know, I'd say it was probably like a good dozen like 10 year olds um, all dressed up in these cute little dresses and everything. And they came in and sat down at a table together with uh, a couple of their parents and chaperones and had tea together. Like we did the whole nine yards, put out the whole tea sets and everything for them. And it was pretty cool. Oh, yeah. Do you have like the little prop? For ones too they have such adorable like little girl ones too like where the little yeah they were yeah, the little. Little, cute little things I, don't know. I didn't do the setting or anything i just made the, the tea cakes <laughs> that was it <laughs> yeah but there's uh, so many different things and possibilities that you can do and it's really up to you and what you have envisioning envision for your concept um how much work is your menu going to be not only for the back of the house but for the front of the house uh and those are questions that some people kind of always forget right especially for us chefs where we are we're very concentrated on the back of the house where we're like yeah it will take it's gonna take um jason like five minutes to make that uh, item and then it's going to go out. But that five minute item may have been like prepping for banana fosters in which now your wait staff has to go out and actually make it and do the pretty flambe and have everybody go, Ooh, you know? So those are things to consider when you're looking at all these different types of table service and, um, and remember, I cannot believe it's already been an hour. It's like craziness. Um, and remember that your discussion is due. 
on Saturday with two peer responses. It has to be more than I agree or I disagree. And then your assignment is that quiz. Just go on, do the quiz, do as, as many times as you would like to. It's open, go for it. Um, and the other thing is that it's a short week for week six. So plan accordingly for it to be a short week next week. Um, does anybody have any questions right now? I do, I have a question. Yeah. Um, I came in a little bit late. Um, I actually did my assignment uh, uh, yesterday for this class, but I did not do the discussion because I didn't quite understand what ranch dressing meant. Um, and I think I might have missed that. What is the dis discussion? What, what do I have to say in my discussion about ranch dressing? Yeah, I can pull it up again for you right now. Um, let me... Well, I no longer have co-hosts since you bounced out and popped back in. Oh, no. Okay. Um, uh, right here in the discussion, if you click on this, and what did you end up with? Was it ranch, ranch dressing? Ranch dressing, yeah. Yeah, so then you have to answer this question. When is it better to make that ranch dressing in-house versus when is it better to just buy it pre-made? So are you a like high-end establishment where you're making everything from scratch and it's a farm to table? So you're getting those chives and everything from the farm itself? Um, or are you like a food truck and it's gonna be a side for your um, for your wings? So you just need ranch dressing for your wings. So when is it better to do when to make it and when to buy it? Are you going to be using ranch dressing as a marinade for your chicken? Ooh, yeah. Are you going to go fancy, make it from scratch, and then you realize how easy it is to actually make ranch dressing? Or are you just going to say, no, I'm going to have it made, and that's going to lower my labor cost because it's going to be two seconds for them to take it out of the bottle, right? Um, and then everybody has... Like there are a variety of different ones. So then everybody gets to look to see what they got and what everybody's answers were. So is it better to make your own mayonnaise? Is it better to make your own mustard or ketchup? Uh, how many people actually know how ketchup started? You guys know how it actually came to be? Anybody? No? It's actually uh, ketchup originally did not have any tomatoes at all. Oh no, we're losing you now, right when you're going to tell the good stuff. Here, if I stop my video, is that better? So I stop my video? Okay, well, uh, it was actually made with fish. So tomatoes originally did not have any, or the ketchup did not have any tomatoes in it. It actually was a fish sauce. And then it was brought over to the UK. And then in 18, I believe 1870 is when they actually added tomatoes to it. And it wasn't until later on that they actually took the anchovies out of it. So, and if anybody missed that because of the, my bad condition, will be a fun little history link for it too so that you now um i hope everybody has a fabulous week next week and look at everybody's discussion um and uh was there anything else i were chef no just carry on guys you know think positive have some fun get her done early because the sooner you get that done the more lively the discussion becomes Right. Uh, so more people that you can actually right. convert with in those discussion forums. And it looks as if Chef has left. Uh, we lost her again. Shucks. Um, but you, you know the drill. You know, the sooner you get things done, the sooner you're able to go uh, and knock out other things that you need to do. OK, so if you ever guys have any questions, always feel free to reach out. Right. Chef Rachel and myself, we're here for you if you need us. And she's back again. Chef. Yep, and I'm going to say goodnight to everybody before...
Um, I will see you again. Have a wonderful night. If you guys have questions, please reach out. Anybody from the live session archive has a question, please reach out. And have a fabulous, fabulous night, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Bye. Have a great night. Good night, chefs. Thanks. Good night. Really don't know if you're recording still or not. You're frozen. <laughs>